need the uh, well, citation. Saying, no, 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 no. no. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm Vince Maniacci, President of American International College, and what a turnout we have tonight. This is amazing. Great job. I, I, am, I am proud of a lot of things, but one of the things I'm proud of this evening is this is the biggest turnout we've ever had for this induction, and, and that is really a tribute to our inductees. So uh, great job, everybody. So excited to have you all here. Um, you know, this is always very meaningful to me because AIC does a lot of wonderful things. We have a lot of wonderful academic programs. We have great faculty. We have great staff. Uh, we have amazing coaches. And uh, one of the things we do really well is put out great student athletes. And so many of our student athletes go on to just do amazing things. And I got to tell you, I, you know, I, I'm Italian, so we're emotional by nature. I can't help it. But I got to tell you, one of the things that really gets me emotional is when I see kids come in their freshman year and they're, they're really quiet or they're complete knuckleheads. And then I look at them, you know, uh, 10 years later and they've got families of their own and they've grown so much and it's just an amazing thing. And now I'm getting to the point where 
where some of the kids that I saw coming in early uh, are now in, in, this, in this group. Bedemi is one of them and, and just uh, people that have just done so many great things in their lives. So this is really a wonderful occasion and um, I just want to tell you that <clears throat> one of the things that is great about this place is our opportunity to really celebrate our inductees. Now, I'm going to be real short tonight because Johnson has 23 pages of remarks and you're going to have to deal with that. Um, so uh, brace yourselves. Uh, I want to uh, thank Jess Chapin uh, for doing a wonderful job this evening. Jess, uh, Jess where are you? Good job. Uh, uh, Heather Garon, who has more energy than any athlete I've ever seen. Heather, stand up and... and uh, Uh, the amazing Candy Lash, who would be inducted into the Hall of Fame if they had it for PR people. Uh, there you are, Candy. Uh, and lastly, Mr. 23 Pages of Remarks, Matt Johnson. Good job, Matt. Uh, thank you all for being here. Cherish the evening. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing that we have going here. And I hope you all get an opportunity to walk around campus a little bit, see some of the changes we've made. I hope you get a chance to see some of our students if you're here tomorrow. And if you do, please stop. And, and, and some of our students who are here tonight, our student athletes, introduce yourselves, talk to them, get to know a little bit about them, a little bit about their lives. Uh, it will enrich your own lives just to know and understand what our kids are doing and, and uh, know that someday they will be you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vince, and good evening, everyone. It's only 23 pages because I went with really big font. <laughs> so it's probably only about 12, uh, 10 to 12 pages if I went with uh, 12 font. I would also like to welcome you to the 2017 Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It is my honor to present the 2017 inductees. Before I do that, however, I would like to acknowledge with gratitude the work of the committee, specifically Rich Bedard, our committee chair. That's Rich. These individuals bring a deep dedication to a very difficult task. The inductees you will meet in a moment are a testament to success of the committee's efforts. The names of the committee members are listed in the program. I would also like to acknowledge the returning members of the Hall of Fame and thank them for being here to recognize the new members of this very exclusive group. When I call your name, I ask that you please stand and remain standing. Edgar Alejandro. Gary Barcher, <laughs> Rafael Calixto, <laughs> Kevin Collins, <laughs> Judy Groff, Kristen Patterson Hutchison, <laughs> Rona McKenzie, <laughs> Mike Mitchell, <laughs> Tom Mullen. Henry Payne, and Mike Smith. If I missed anyone, please stand, and I apologize. Okay, thank you guys. Congratulations to each of you for the achievements that earned you a plaque on this wall. This time, it would be appropriate to remember those members of the Hall of Fame who are no longer with us. I will read their names and ask for a moment of silence when I have finished. Joe Buckholtz, Henry Butova, Vince Cin Cincotti, Bill Delaney, Dick Dukesher, Greg Hill, Bill Jenkins, George Babe Meacham, Joe O'Grady, Milt Peppel, Lou Randall, 
Gaten Salvucci, Chris Serino, Bill Turner, and Fred Zanetti. Thank you. To the friends and relatives of our inductees, congratulations and thank you for your support. I only ask that you support your Hall of Famers during this ceremony in a way which respects and maintains the dignity of the event. I ask that you please remain seated and for, refrain from standing to take photos. There will be plenty of opportunities after the ceremony for pictures. We will also be sharing the professional photos once they are available. I would say to the inductees that the simple recitation of your achievements, which will follow shortly, speaks more eloquently than I can to your membership in the American International College Athletic Hall of Fame. I will only offer my heartfelt congratulations. Finally, I want to urge our current coaches and players who are here tonight, representing more than 560 student athletes at the college today, to watch and listen carefully. I hope the next few minutes will help you understand the significance and tradition that you are now a part of. In a real sense, these Hall of Famers represent you, but in another important way, you represent them. You are the present. You are wearing the colors in the arena now as they once did. I hope that you will further your resolve to represent them with pride and distinction. And now, let's begin our ceremony. I will announce the name of the first inductee who will join me next to the podium to be presented with a personal plaque on this side. I will then read the citation of achievement. Then we will move on to the next inductee. When all of the inductees have been recognized in this way, Bill Condon, class of 1977, will present a short response for the group. Finally, each inductee will be called upon to unveil their permanent plaque. This is the formal moment of induction. Before announcing our first inductee, we have a special presentation to make. In 2008, Rona McKenzie was inducted into the AIC Athletic Hall of Fame. At the time, Rona was in Europe playing professional basketball. Tonight, we are fortunate that Rona has returned to campus for the first time, and we want to take this opportunity to recognize her. Rona, will you please come forward? Rona's plaque is already up on the wall. The, f the following is Rona's citation from the 2008 induction ceremony. Rona McKenzie was a Northeast 10 All-Star in each of her three seasons at AIC, earning first team honors her junior and senior campaigns and second team honors as a sophomore. She led the Yellow Jackets to three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances from 2000 to 2002. McKenzie was also a two-time ECAC second team selection, 2000-2001 and 2001-2002, and was named to the 2001-02 Dactronics All-Region team. She led the team in rebounding in each of her three seasons with the Yellow Jackets and was also the team's leading scorer as a junior, averaging a double-double with 16.4 points and 10.4 rebounds per game. At the conclusion of her collegiate career, she held or shared five school records in rebounding and block shots and ranked among AIC's all-time leading scorers, seventh, 1,373 points, and rebounders, third, 1,020 rebounds. McKenzie was just the third player in program history to score 1,000 points and grab 1,000 rebounds. She has since gone on to play professionally in Europe for teams in Holland, Luxembourg, and most recently Switzerland. Mackenzie led the Perrick Jumpers to the 2007 Dutch Cup Final, was selected to play in the Dutch All-Star Game in 2007 after averaging 18.6 points and 14.2 rebounds per contest, and ranked second in rebounding at the 2007 FIBA Europe Cup. She averaged 15.5 points and 10.1 rebounds for Switzerland's Sierra at the 2008 Euro Cup. Rona Mackenzie. Now for the 2017 inductees. Our first inductee is Bedemi Belogan, class of 2012, indoor and outdoor track and field. Bedemi Belogan, class of 2012, 
brought instant recognition to the American International College track and field program when she first arrived at AIC in the fall of 2008. She became the first ever track and field All-American at AIC on either the men's or women's side. After placing seventh in the weight throw at the 2008 NCAA Division II Indoor Championships during the program's third year of existence. But Demi was a seven-time national qualifier and earned three All-American first team nods throughout her career, winning twice for the hammer throw during the outdoor season. She was named the 2009 Northeast 10 Conference Freshman of the Year. But Demi won the indoor conference title in weight throw each of her four years in the program and earned three straight outdoor conference titles in the hammer throw. The psychology major holds both the AIC and Northeast 10 championship records in the weight throw, including three of the top five all-time marks in the event. In addition to her achievements at the college, Bademi competed as a member of the Nigerian national team at the 2011 All-African Games where she took eighth place in the hammer throw with a toss of 54.14 inches. After leaving AIC, Bademi attended Jacksonville University where she earned her Master's of Science in Psychology with a specialization in Applied Behavioral Analysis, ABA. Bademi currently resides in Maryland where she is an ABA consultant with Verbal Beginnings, LLC. Bademi Belogan. Our next inductee is William Billy Connolly, class of 1970 football. Unfortunately, Billy passed away this past March. Representing him tonight is his daughter, Carrie. <laughs> William Billy Connolly, class of 1970, was a key member of the freshman and varsity football teams in the late 1960s. The Norwalk, Connecticut native was a starting quarterback, safety, and punter for the freshman team. He scored 39 of the team's 90 points. From his sophomore season on, Billy helped lead the Yellow Jackets under center. In his three seasons as the varsity quarterback, he threw for over 2,400 yards, had 17 touchdowns, and averaged 38.98 yards per punt. In his first season on the varsity team, Billy was named a second team All-New England quarterback. He tied the standing New England record of 41.1 yards per punt. During his time at AIC, Connolly broke the program career total offense record. He served as team captain in 1969. Billy was a winner of the Lieutenant Alvin J. Karakari Memorial Sportsmanship Award. His senior year, Billy played for AIC Baseball. After he received his undergraduate degree in history from AIC, Billy worked with youth groups in Springfield before being named the Youth Coordinator for the City of Quincy, Massachusetts. Billy taught in the New Bedford School District for more than 30 years before retiring in 2007. Outside the classroom, Billy volunteered at the local YMCA, established a group home for at-risk girls in Quincy, Mass., was an official for football and baseball, taught GED classes, and found time to coach a field hockey team for nine years. Carrie, please accept this on behalf of your father, Billy Connolly. Our next inductee is Larry Freed, class of 1968, baseball and basketball. Larry Freed, class of 1968, was an outstanding two-sport athlete for American International College. Larry was a force to be reckoned with on both the basketball court and baseball field. In his three seasons with the basketball team, Larry scored more than 570 points before the three-point line was added and pulled down nearly 450 rebounds. He shot almost 45% from the field in the 74 games he wore the Yellow Jacket uniform. Larry was part of the first Yellow Jacket basketball team to reach the NCAA tournament. In his three seasons on the varsity squad, the Yellow Jackets went 58 and 19 and made two Elite Eight appearances. On the baseball field, Larry is second all-time in career earned run average with a .82 ERA. He is on the single season ERA record book twice at .55 in 1968 
and 1.0 in 1967, ranking him in third and fifth place all time. Larry was the winner of the F.J. Maloney Award in 1968 as the most outstanding athlete for four years. Following graduation, Larry worked for Westinghouse while also beginning to serve in the Army Reserves for six years. In 1970, he began a more than 30-year career in insurance and investments. Larry served on the board of directors for the Springfield Boys and Girls Club board for 30 years, with 20 years as treasurer for the organization. Larry Freed. Our next inductee is Gary Grodzicki, class of 1974, baseball and basketball. Gary J. Grodzicki, class of 1974, was a standout multi-sport athlete for the Yellow Jackets. The, Merid the Meriden, Connecticut native was a three-year starter on the basketball team. He was also a three-year pitcher on the baseball team under former New York Yankee pitcher and AIC baseball coach Art Dittmar, as well as former AIC baseball coach Rich Bedard. On the basketball court, he scored over 600 points in 70 games and averaged double figures in scoring his senior season when the team finished with a 15-9 and nine record. He received the Christopher Ellis Outstanding Hustle Basketball Awards in both the 1972-73 and 1973-74 seasons. In baseball, Grodzicki was a standout pitcher. He currently ranks third in wins in a single season, compiling a 7-1 record in 1973. Gary completed his baseball career with a 2.28% earned run average. In 1974, he was named co-captain of the baseball team and was awarded the prestigious F.J. Maloney Trophy as the college's most outstanding athlete for a four-year period. After graduating from AIC with a degree in economics, he obtained his MBA in management and organizational behavior and advanced leadership certification from the University of Notre Dame. He is also a lifetime member of the AIC Alumni Varsity Club. Gary has served as a credit union executive for over 35 years, holding positions as president and chief executive officer of the Connecticut State Police Credit Union and Enfield Connecticut Community Federal Credit Union. He retired in 2013 from Springfield's Freedom Credit Union as their Vice President and Chief Lending Officer. In addition to his professional work, Grodzicki, now a resident of Florida, has been a wish grantor for the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Central and Northern Florida since 2013 and was inducted into the Meriden Maloney High School Athletic Hall of Fame in 2006. Gary J. Grodzicki. Our next inductee is Alfred Al Laudy, class of 1954. Football. Al Laudy, class of 1954, was one of the best football players to ever grace the program. Al was a three-year varsity starting fullback and linebacker for the Yellow Jackets. During his time as the Yellow Jacket, Al was an integral part of the team's success. In his first varsity season, he was second on the team in both total offense and scoring. Al had four touchdowns and 447 total yards. As a junior, he had a team leading nine touchdowns and 561 total yards of offense. During his senior year, Al once again led the team in scoring with four touchdowns and was second on the team in total offense with 315 yards. While at AIC, Al was awarded the Kara Carey Memorial Sportsmanship Award, received an honorable mention as Little All-American, served as captain in 1953, as well as being named MVP during that season. Coach Henry, Henry Butova called him the perfect athlete. Following graduation, Al was named to the all-time AIC football team. From 1967 to 71, Al was the assistant principal at Westfield High School before becoming the principal at Frontier Regional School from 1971 to 77. 
1977, he was appointed superintendent of schools in Deerfield, Massachusetts, a position he held for 10 years. During this time, Al also coached baseball at Classical High School and football at Iguam High School. It should be noted that prior to attending AIC, Al enlisted in the Army straight out of high school. He served his country for two years during World War II before returning home safely. Al Laudy. Our next inductee is Joseph Joe Pistone, class of 2000, wrestling. <laughs> Joe Pistone, class of 2000, was a talented wrestler who set college program records and dominated at the 177, 184, and 197 pound weight classes over four years. In his freshman campaign, Joe had immediate impact, finishing second at the Kutztown University Invitational and winning the Oneonta State Invitational. That was only a taste of what was to come. As a sophomore, Joe tore through his opponents, winning the Oneonta State Invitational, the Hunter State Invitational, and the Ithaca College Invitational, where he was named Most Outstanding Wrestler. That set the stage for an NCAA run where he finished second in the NCAA regional tournament and eighth at the NCAA national championship, earning All-American honors as a result. Joe's junior season was full of promise as well. He served as team captain, won the Oneonta State Invitational again at 184 pounds, and took the Most Outstanding Wrestler Award for a second time at the Ithaca College Invitational, which he also won. He was ranked in the top six the entire season, but regrettably, just before the start of the regional tournament, a knee injury forced him to withdraw. Coming back as captain for his final campaign in 99-2000, Joe wrestled at 197, winning the Springfield College and Roger Williams University Invitationals. He finished his career fourth in the NCAA Regionals. Overall, Joe's record of 120 and 29 is tied for the highest winning percentage of any ASC wrestler. In addition, his 73 dual meet wins set a college record. Since graduating in 2000, Joe has continued to have an impact on wrestling. While at Southern Maine from 2003 to 15, he coached 39 all New England wrestlers, including eight regional champions and nine wrestlers in advance to the national tournament. Three of the nine earned All-American status. Having coached at Florida Gulf Coast University since 2015, Joe already has 11 NCWA national championship qualifiers to his credit. Joe Pistone. Our next inductee is Amber Radomski, undergraduate class of 2003, and MBA in 2006, softball. Thank you. Amber Radomski received her undergraduate degree in 2003 and her MBA in 2006. She was one of the most dominant softball players in the history of AIC's storied program. Upon her arrival in 1999, Amber made an immediate impact both at the plate and in the circle, hitting 299 and going 6-4 and four with a 2.02 ERA, earning an all-NEISCA selection as a utility player. This trend continued for four seasons, with Amber a key figure in head coach Judy Groff's lineup that made it to the NCAA tournament, tournament during her sophomore, junior, and senior campaigns. Amber's best season came senior year when she went 14-9 and nine with a 2.13 ERA and hit 326, earning first team All-Northeast 10 Conference and all NEISCA selections and leading the team to an NE10 title. In addition to her softball success, Amber spent one season on the basketball team and four seasons with the tennis program while at AIC. Her skill was matched by her leadership abilities. She was named softball and tennis captains for the 2002 season, a title she kept for softball in 2003. Amber earned the Any 10 Sportsmanship Award for tennis her senior season in the fall of 2002. 
Amber also received many co-curricular awards, the John Homer Miller Award, the Outstanding Sophomore, Outstanding Junior, and Outstanding Senior Awards. The Alumni Memorial Award was named to who's who among students in American universities and colleges. And in 2003, Amber became the first female athlete at AIC to earn the President's Cup. Amber returned to AIC, graduating with her MBA in 2006. She has played softball for the famous Stratford Briquettes since 2006, serving as player coach for the team since 2011, during which she has won six major women's softball titles. Just this month, she was inducted into the Connecticut Fast Pitch Hall of Fame. Amber currently serves the town of Branford, Connecticut, as a police officer in the patrol division. Amber Radomsky. Our next inductee is Nicole Sullivan, undergraduate class of 2001 and MSOT in 2002, lacrosse and soccer. A fierce defender with a knack for finding the net, Nicole Sullivan received her under, undergraduate degree in 2001 and her master's in occupational therapy in 2002. Nicole was a two-way threat for four years with the women's soccer team. For three of her four years, she, re, she served as team captain. Nicole's freshman year in 1997 saw her tally a pair of goals and assists. The table was set for the Yellow Jackets to advance, and advance they did the following year, going undefeated in Northeast 10 play in 1998, where they won the f their first regular season title and advanced to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. Nicole earned first team all NE10 and all East Region honors for her skill in AIC's backfield. She continued to dominate opposing offenses through her junior and senior campaigns in 1999. Nicole was second team all NE10 selection as well as earning first team all New England honors from the New England Women's Intercollegiate Soccer Association. Nicole's breakout year came in 2000, her final campaign with the team. Helping the squad to a 10-3-1 record in any 10 play, she scored six goals and added six assists for a career-best 18 points. Nicole's efforts on both ends of the pitch paid off as she was named any 10 Defensive Player of the Year, the first AIC player so honored. She also earned first team all any 10 and second team all region selections for her play. Nicole received the F.J. Maloney Award for the Most Outstanding Four-Year Athlete. In addition to soccer, Nicole served as captain of the lacrosse team in 2001 and 2002. And after graduating in 2001, she returned to campus as an assistant coach for the soccer team. Nicole currently works as an occupational therapist with the Visiting Nurse Association of Boston. Nicole Sullivan. Our final inductee is Bill Condon, class of 1977, ice hockey. One of the all-time leading scorers in the long history of the American International College ice hockey program, Bill Condon, class of 1977, was an offensive force on arguably the best line in team history. He played right wing on a unit with AIC Hall of Famers Edgar Alejandro, center, and Tom Mullen, left wing. Both are in attendance tonight. The trio were known as the New York Connection for their ability to put pucks in the back of the net. Bill's line had 192 points in 1974-75 alone, with 81 goals and 111 assists. Bill scored 62 goals and added 114 assists in his career. He sits seventh all-time in points with 176 and is tied for fourth in assists with Mullen and AIC Hall of Famer Vezio Sacratini. Bill was a leader, serving as the team's captain in the 1975-76 and 76-77 seasons and earning many accolades during his career. He was the winner of the William E. Conniff Award for Ability, Scholarship, and Loyalty, the Henry A. Butova Memorial Award for Leadership, the F.J. Maloney Award as Most Outstanding Athlete for four years at AIC. In addition, Bill was named to Who's Who in American universities and colleges in 1977 and received a Citation of Merit. Off the ice, Bill was a resident assistant with on-campus housing for three years. 
After graduating with a degree in business administration, Bill returned home to New York and coached at Cardinal Hayes High School for five years. He took the team to New York City's prestigious Catholic High School City Championship every year, winning three times. In addition, Bill refereed youth, high school, and collegiate hockey for a dozen years and served as an off-ice official with the NHL for six years. Bill works at CBS as the Vice President for Payroll, a title he earned in 2000. He oversees the payroll function for Showtime, Paramount Television Stations, CBS Television Stations, and the CBS Network. Bill Condon. At this time, I'd like to ask Bill to stay and say a couple things on behalf of the 2017 inductees. Thank you. Uh-oh. Directions to the hotel. <laughs> All right, everyone sit back, relax a while. Um, I'll try and keep this just under an hour, and then I'll talk another five minutes on the other inductees. <laughs> Thank you, Vince, and to the selection committee of the hall for the honor to speak on behalf of the Hall of Fame inductees. We are honored that the college has recognized our accomplishments both on and off the field, the court, and the ice, and we have a lot to be thankful for. We are thankful for having had the opportunity to play the sports that we loved at a competitive collegiate level. When our sports were in session, it meant we had a combination of practices and games six days a week. This was not work. It was sheer joy to play, compete, and represent AIC the best that we could. We are thankful also for the opportunity to have been student athletes at AIC. The operative word here is student. Although all of us were accomplished athletes when attending the college, we had a privilege of getting a college education at the same time. There are only a handful of athletes in the entire hall of fame here who were able to pursue a professional career in the sports they played. However, the vast majority of the student athletes here in this hall have benefited from the education received and the advantages that were provided by having a college degree and how that assisted us in our careers after AIC. Finally, we are thankful for the bonds of friendship that we established with our teammates and classmates. It is a, ki it is a kind of special friendship that was established in a four-year period or less many years ago can still remain so strong to this day. That, I believe, is what makes being part of a team of athletes so great. I think a lot of people would agree that the education you receive in college is not confined to only the classroom. Most of us entered AIC as 18-year-old freshmen. We had just finished high school and the awkward middle teenage years. I refer to our time in college as the wonder years. Now those of you old enough remember the TV commercials in the 60s that might remember the wonder years and that was defined by the Wonder Bread commercials as being the growth period between ages 1 and 12 and eating Wonder Bread built bodies 12 ways. <laughs> However, I feel the true wonder years are from ages 18 to 21 while we were attending college and I have a few reasons to justify that theory. Number one, our parents wondered if we could possibly graduate. <laughs> Number two, our coaches and professors might say, oh, I wonder about that one. <laughs> and finally, we all knew a classmate who said, I wonder what I did last night. There's <laughs> a bunch of you out there. <laughs> The great thing about AIC through the years was that we had guardian angels on campus who kept an eye on us and tried to put us in the best position to make the proper decisions to succeed and grow up. 
Usually these people were our coaches, but they were, they were also our professors, like Professor O'Neill, Professor, Professor Quinlan, Dr. Sprintall, Dean Brennan, Mr. Bill Turner. In the, in the athletic department, we had people like Coach Fox, Wally Barlow, Tom Simmons and his assistant, Charlie, Ron Winslow and his assistant, Danny, and last but not least, the unforgettable Cappy. Now, one of our inductees did not take the same route as most of us 18-year-old freshmen. That distinction belongs to Al Laudy, class of 1954, who enlisted after high school and was a paratrooper during World War II. He also attended Brown University for a year prior to coming to AIC. In addition to attending AIC and being an outstanding athlete, he was also a husband and a father to two children at that time. It is no wonder that we refer to his generation as the greatest generation. Finally, I'd like to personally thank AIC for honoring me as an inductee as an, and I appreciate all the support of my teammates. In particular, there are the two teammates, my line mates I should say, Edgar Alejandro and Tommy Mullen, who were previously inducted into the Hall of Fame and have been impatiently waiting for me to join them. <laughs> we have been friends and teammates since we were 11 years old, and to enjoy the success we had together here at AIC has been priceless. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Bill. It is now time for the formal inductions. Each inductee will be called to present him or herself for the unveiling of the permanent plaque, and a formal photograph will be taken. Again, there will be plenty of opportunities for private photos to be taken after the ceremony. But Demi Belogan, will you please come forward? Carrie Stracos, will you please come forward on behalf of Bill Connolly. Larry Freed, will you please come forward. Gary Grodzicki, will you please come forward? <laughs> Al Laudy, will you please come forward? Joe Pistone, will you please come forward? <laughs> Thank you. 
Amber Rodofsky, will you please come forward? Nicole Sullivan, will you please come forward? <laughs> Bill Condon, I don't think I need to tell you what to do. That concludes our ceremony. Thank you for your attendance and attention. And congratulations again to the inductees. Let's give them one more big round of applause. Will, will all our Hall of Famers, past and present, please come to the front of the room for a group picture. Thank you, everybody.